Welcome in everybody. This is your boy Pastor Colbert. So glad that you tuned in tonight. As you can see, we're not in the sanctuary. We're actually in the backyard of our outreach center, our community outreach center, the True Vine Community Resource Center. And I kind of want to do something a little different today. So I hope you all enjoy. I want to, hey, I want to continue with this whole piece that we've been doing titled Walking in Wisdom. And we're in part five and we're just walking through the book of Proverbs and we're just seeing where we land and I had a great time last week. So let's go back to chapter three and uh, we've just been dealing with wisdom. Why wisdom, pastor? Because I've been laying a foundation in the book of Proverbs that was written by the wisest man that has ever lived according to God. God said there will be never, there will never be one as wise as Solomon. So Solomon, who was the wisest man in the world, who wrote the wisest book in the world, which is the book of Proverbs. So Proverbs, again, is a succinct, timeless treasure that just speaks to you about how not to act stupid. <laughs> I'm trying to say it better than that, but it just gives you some wise things to do in life that will save you a whole lot of headaches relationally. As we move to chapter 6, it talks about why you shouldn't co-sign for anybody. And then as we move from chapter 6, it talks about slothfulness and, and how poverty uh, pounces on somebody with no get up and go about themselves. Some, some people, listen, some people are not broke because God is testing them. Some people are broke because they're lazy. Hmm. Uh, you ought to just type in the comments to your neighbor and ask him, are you saving lazy? <laughs> uh, and so wait till you hear me talk about what the Bible says about slothfulness. And then, of course, all of you know about the contrast between us and the ants. Yeah, that 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 ants got more get up and go than some people. <laughs> and see, ants will work all summer to make sure they have food for the winter. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will. And have you ever seen ants? pulling a whole slice of bread on the side of a sidewalk. Come on, give me some hearts if you dare. Have you ever seen that? And, and about two million ants just getting that bread because they had a plan. See, if ants can get some bread, then you ought to be able to get some food in that house. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. So Proverbs is about wisdom. Why wisdom? Why, why now, pastor? Number one, because God told me to. And when he speaks, and I don't throw his name out all the time, but when I do throw his name out, you ought to listen. Come on, you ought to listen. I, I thought I would be teaching something else this year, but but the Spirit of God said, no, you, you sit down in wisdom. Sit down in it until you come out of it. Mm. He said, don't rush it. Don't rush it. He said, if you take, if it have to take you all spring, you know, and, and a little bit of summer, he said, don't come out of it until I tell you to come out of it. So he said, because you, 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 you have a whole lot of wonderful saved people, Colbert, who are not operating in wisdom. He said, you know, let me tell you what he said. God said, he, he said, and they say too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they say, and they are good people, but they're not operating in wisdom. Oh, you got, you got singles dating dummies. And then you got some married people who I know love God, but they're not operating in his wisdom. And these marriages are just breaking up. They're, they're half separating. They, they're living like unsaved folk in a Christian context. He said, no. God said, no. He said, some of your best people, I got plans for their life, but they're they shopaholics. Mm. And then coupled with that, they're not tithing. They're doing all that shopping, but they're not tithing. So they like to shop, but they don't like to tithe. Now, how that going to work out? So I can go on and on about some decisions that God spoke to me and said that many of you have been praying for a long time. I'm about to bless you, but you haven't been praying for wisdom. And he said they have not specifically asked me for my wisdom. That's what God said. And, and, and therefore, uh, a lot of years... They've been busting some moves that I have told that I haven't told them to bust. Mm. By the time we're through with this, you're gonna operate and get excited in the wisdom of God. And when that wisdom comes to your house, every move you make, you're gonna glide through it. Cause it came from God. You tell family members, I don't move until wisdom speaks to me. Amen. So Proverbs 
chapter 3, verse 14. This is interesting. It says, for her profit is better than the profit of silver. Well, follow me. And her gain is better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing, hear me, you desire compares with her. Long life in her right hand and in her left hand, oh, are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who hold her fast. Who is her? Who is her? I mean, who is she and who is her? Now, isn't it interesting that he refers to wisdom in the feminine? Why the feminine? Hmm. It's amazing because there are times when you see masculine tense. And then there, for whatever reason, Solomon decides that I want to call wisdom her. And he talks about her like a fine woman. Now, maybe, I don't know, this is probably eisegesis. Is it because sometimes women tends to walk in a little more wisdom than some brothers? Oh, my God. I, I tell brothers, if you want to live a long time and do some good things, listen to your wife. Why? Because she's smarter than you. I know mine is smarter than me. See, the, the, see, there, there's areas, of course, you know, I build her up, you know, and I, I teach her and, and train her, of course. That's my job. That's my job as a husband, as a man. I, I've been teaching and training my wife since I met her. It, it, it's a sad brother that don't make his wife better. Oh, I said, it's a, sad, it's a sad brother that don't make his wife better. And I want my girl to be better. I want my woman, I want my wife to be better. I try to make her better in every way I can. But every now and then, I'll be ready to do something. She says real softly, are you sure you want to do that, Charles? I'm like, why you say that? Oh, nothing. Just, just, just think about it before you do that. Oh, okay. So let, let's reread that. Let, let's do it this way. For wisdom, profit is better than the profit of silver. And wisdom gain better than fine gold. Wisdom is more precious than jewels. And nothing you desire compares uh, in wisdom, left hand, or riches and honor. Wisdom are ways, wisdom ways are pleasant ways. And all wisdom paths are peace. Wisdom is a tree of life, those who take hold of wisdom and happy are all who hold wisdom fast. Now, wow, man, listen, that's powerful. So it's like wisdom is better than the finest jewelry. That's what it says. It's better than any finest jewelry. Wisdom is better than gold and jewels and nothing you desire compares with wisdom. Long life is in wisdom. So all this stuff that I'm saying, so some, somebody should be just sitting there, sitting up in front of their phone or their iPad or their computer saying, I want some wisdom because that's what the Bible says. It says wisdom. So, so what are you pursuing? What are you pursuing in this season in 2021? What are you pursuing? The wisdom of God or God's thinking or God's decision making in every area of your life. Now, many of us have not walked in wisdom. Let's be truthful. Many of us have not walked in wisdom. You know, you got a good heart, but you made some moves that wasn't wise. I mean, who among us has not made a move that we thought to ourselves later that, mm, that, that wasn't wise. It felt good for the moment. It was what I desire. I was young and immature, half high, <laughs> kicking it with the wrong crowd. Yeah, whatever you want to name it. Lack of parenting. Uh, lack of a brother speaking into my life as a young brother, lack of a real godly woman telling me how to date, how to be married, how to handle a brother when you're married to him, how to handle my money, the critical, the criticality of no debt, whatever it was, whatever we lack in some type of way, wisdom didn't come our way and we didn't operate in it. So what are we doing? We are deciding as a church. Mm -hmm. As a, as a ministry that we're going to walk in wisdom. Now, let me show you something powerful. Now, I want you to look at verse 19, everybody, because this, this messed me up. It says, the Lord by wisdom found the earth. 
<laughs> I never seen that in my life. I've been reading the Bible almost for 30, 40 years and I missed it. That's why I kept, that's why I kept reading it. That's why I keep reading it. I, I never seen that. Here, here's what I thought was interesting. The Bible does not say and it does not say and love created the earth. And we do know that one of God's attributes is love. It, it didn't say that grace created the earth. It said wisdom. So in his sovereignty, the attribute of wisdom is what he used in the creation narrative. Ooh, this is cold-blooded, y'all. In other words, when God got ready to create the earth, it was wisdom that designed it. Ooh, I'm about to mess you up, Pastor. Make it applicable to me. I sure will. If wisdom created the earth, what will it create in your life? <laughs> if wisdom created the earth, what business will it create for you? Now, some of you, I've been telling you this for years and you didn't hear me. Stop asking for money and ask for an idea. Huh. See, that's, that's the lazy way. God, give me some money. God, give me some money. The godly way is give me some wisdom to operate in something that will bring all the finances that I need to my family. God, let wisdom create an idea in my mind. God, give me the kind of wisdom that schools don't teach. Give me the kind of wisdom that the computers don't have. Stuff that I can't find on Google. Give me God, give me a God kind of wisdom for my life that I'll end up where I'm supposed to be. If it created the world, watch this, what can wisdom create in your life? God, give me your wisdom. Give me your wisdom. And in every area of my life. So, so this, this is proverb. This is so powerful, everybody. See, verse 22. Read, look at it. Look at it. So they will be life to your soul mm. and adornment to your neck. Woo. Then you will, watch this, walk in your way securely and your foot will not stumble. The text says you get wise and you'll just and you'll stop slipping. Ooh, let me say that again. The text says that you'll get wise and you'll stop slipping. Will you just lean on your keypad and just type in the comments? You're slipping, baby. You're slipping. <laughs> the text says if you want to stop slipping so much, the text says you won't stumble all the time if you get some wisdom. See, that, that, that is not to suggest that you won't stumble sometimes. Yeah, when the Bible speaks, it is not speaking in absolutes. It is speaking in generalization. In other words, because I do certain things, people preach the Bible wrong. They just do. When the Bible says, you know, wealth will come to your house, it will overflow, that does not suggest that everybody who lives right and ties and honor God is going to overflow with money. No, no. What the Bible tends to mean is, if you do right by your money, give God the first part. Don't make dumb decisions. Work hard. You probably would never run out. Mm, probably, probably that, that, that doesn't mean life won't happen, but you, but, but for the most part, a person who does right with their finances, a person who does right in their relationship, uh, would just have less drama than people who don't see if the Bible is not true, then why are you watching me tonight? Why are you sitting here in Bible study tonight? Because who believe the word of God is true? Give me some hearts out there who believe the word of God is true. If you believe it. Give me some hearts. Okay, okay, I'm about to mess you up. I'm about to mess everybody that's online tonight. I'm about to mess you up. Come on, when you type in the comments to your neighbor and tell them you're about to get messed up. You're about to get messed up. I'm about to mess you up since you're here, which is you're watching me. Because verse 24, uh, Proverbs 3 says, When you lie down, you will not be afraid. <laughs> when you lie down, you'll sleep. Your sleep will be sweet. Mm. Okay, he said your sleep will be sweet, which is indicative of something that all of you know already, because if he says sweet sleep, that tells me some sleep is not sweet. <laughs> your sleep will be sweet. When will your sleep will be sweet? If you operate in wisdom. Now, somebody knows what it is to sleep eight hours and wake up tired. <laughs> 
you know, went to bed at 9.30 and here you are 7.30 in the morning just tired and messed up. Don't act like you ain't never been there because you kind of slept. But but you was uh, you was kind of asleep and kind of thinking too much. Woo. I mean, every couple of hours you will wake up and think about that thing. It, it could be ministry stuff. Uh, trust me, I know. It could be marriage stuff. It could be a child. Uh, it, it, can, it can be a move that you're making and Holy Spirit messing with you. It could be something that you brought uh, on yourself that you're tripping on or something that you bought. Uh, uh, this repo man is coming tonight or they're going to cut off this stuff. They're going to cut off my lights tonight or my water. This man going to call me again or jump on me again. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And all of a sudden, sleep is not sweet. Sleep is not sweet. The enemy goal is to keep you from sweet sleep. This is why he doesn't want you at this ministry. Yeah, he, that's why he don't want you at GTV or Greater True Vine. He would rather have you anywhere. He'd rather get you to go someplace uh, at home or, you know, or anywhere else or watch anything else because he don't want you to get this word. Because he has a goal to keep you out of rest and peace. And when you operate in these principles, peace is going to come to you. Yeah, you'll sleep better than people who are not making wise moves. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to say something. Uh, if you don't occur, that's cool. But at least, follow me, come on. Here it is. Good choices leads to a peaceful life. Mm. Good choices lead to a peaceful life is that to say that everybody that makes good choices will never have drama pastor that's not what i said that's not what i said but in general people who make good choices you know who i'm talking to see anybody under 30 teenagers i like for them to be in this Bible said in this word because I want my teens to listen to me teach. I, I like them to have their class. Yeah, I like them to have their class because there's some teens things they need to hear and discuss with each other. But but right now I want them with me. I want them watching with me because the quicker I can grab them and tell them you think it's nothing. But this one night on Friday can mess with your peace for years. You may think it's nothing, on boy, on girl. But that just one night on Friday with you, and you know what I'm talking about, my teenagers, can mess with your peace for years. Because some of you lost your peace with a one night stand, <laughs> a one time thing, and then boom, I'm pregnant, a baby on the way. Mm. Good choices. Listen what the word say. Good choices. See, I've been saying this, and I think it's worth remembering. And I said it one time, but you didn't hear me. The reason why I want to make good choices is because I never know when life is going to choose me. Woo. See, life is going to choose you. Anybody got chosen by life? Come on, give me some hearts. Anybody got chosen? Chose by life is when you read one text on your phone and find out something about your spouse that you didn't know. <laughs> see, see, chose by life is when somebody you love went to heaven way before you thought they should. See, chose by life is when somebody you gave everything to treated you like you gave them nothing. Chose by life is when you give all you have to someone and she said, no, you never gave me anything, so I'm leaving you. See, some of you know what I'm talking about tonight. So since I can't really control when life is going to choose me, I'm going to try my best to make good choices. See, good choices, I'm helping somebody tonight, good choices lead to a peaceful life. And can I tell all of y'all something tonight that's watching me? You ought to thank God that you're at the right church. Mm, I'm talking to my GTV members and my GTV nation. You ought to thank God for his word. Can, can we just kick it tonight? Can we, can we kick it? Come on, let us reason it together. Let, let us reason together. See, you know some people don't want instructions. No, they don't want. Yeah, they don't want instructions. You ought to be glad that somebody want to give you some godly advice. See, I've had some people come to me and want to get married, and I counsel them, and during counseling, I tell them, you know what, baby, you know, you need to, you need at least another year and uh, another year and a half before y'all get married. 
you, you, you got you got too many past issues, you know. You got parental issues and how you going to deal with a blended family? How how much money y'all got? See, so 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 you come to me and I say no, okay? Then you leave here if you want to come. But 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 you need to wait 4 or 5 months before you get married. See, that, that, that's too long, Pastor. Uh, yeah, they, they, they try to run somebody's life, you know. I, no, I'm not trying to run your life. I'm trying to save your life. Yeah, we're, we're, we're trying, Lady Cobra and I are trying to save your life. And, and then people say, Pastor, you know, Pastor talks about marriage too much. He talks about money too much. Pastor talks about sex way too much. I don't want to hear all that. He just need to tell them, they just need to go get filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you won't have all this stuff in your life. And so what happened was, you got filled with the Holy Ghost, but didn't pay your bills. Yeah. Uh, and broke. Yeah. And cussing. And, 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 and yeah. Uh-huh. And fighting your husband. And, and, and gay as you can be and sleeping with everybody, but no kind of order in your sex life, having gay sex and single sex, but, but you're saved and filled with the whole, yeah, y'all ain't saying nothing. Well, I don't need this wisdom teaching. I have the Holy Ghost. Well, thank you, Lord. Because let me tell you something. In Acts 6, do you remember when they were picking the deacons? They say, let us find seven men filled with the Holy Ghost and wisdom which means there's a distinction between having the Holy Ghost and operating in wisdom. Because if it was just the Holy Ghost, then why did they say wisdom? Why did they just add wisdom to it? Because everybody that has the Holy Ghost is not the wisest person around you. Yeah, you don't, you don't have no excuse to making these dumb moves because you have a church that's kicking it to you. You got a pastor that's trying to teach you at the risk of being political and controversial. We teach it all here at GTV because I want you to have wisdom. I want my singles to be able to say, God, I'm, I'm going to need you to talk to me because I'm feeling this brother that I met last night and I feel really excited and good about it. But I, but I, but I always feel this way in the beginning. This is the 11th time, God, that I'm feeling this way about a brother. This is my 1100th time and I feel all bubbly and I can't sleep and he smelled nice and he's seemingly nice and, and you gotta say God I always feel this way God speak to my heart give me a dream reveal something to me because I always feel this way and at the end I always feel bad God will you allow your wisdom God told me just have a conversation with you tonight about wisdom I'm not interested in covering a thousand verses tonight See, if you get this one verse, it will be cool with me tonight. And that is how you can have this peaceful sleep and restful sleep. Because, see, I want you to operate in this wisdom where you understand that when I make these commitments, this is the God kind of marriage. We're going to do this in greater true line in GTV. See, to our married couples, what exactly did you mean by better or for worse? Yeah. What part of worse did you mean? Because I was standing there with my robe on and you were crying with your white or your beige on. And I'm standing up there doing the vows. And I so I take Cresha, I take Ray Ray, I take Boo Boo in sickness and in health for better or for worse. Sometimes I want to say both of y'all need to stop lying. <laughs> now I'm asking you again, what part of worse do you mean? You should have said until the sexes ain't great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should have said unless... You don't make me rich like I was hoping my Robin Hood would. Unless your baby mama really gets on my nerves. Unless we don't click like I hope we would. Just just, just say that when you come to the altar. So, so I want you to operate in this wisdom where you understand that when you make these commitments, this is the God kind of marriage. We're going to do this the God kind of way at Greater True Vine. We're going to have some wise marriages. Singles are going to make some wise decisions. Brothers are going to make wise choices with their money. And everybody is coming out of debt in this church. Come on, get in the flow tonight. I feel God. And somebody is going to get wealthy in this church. And somebody is going to live on the kind of land they want to live on. And, and, and somebody is going to have that peace of God in their house because when you lie down verse 24 sleep will be sweet God choices good choices lead to a peaceful life see I got in the car last week and I meditated and the spirit said 
you didn't teach last week then, last Wednesday, bold enough. He, God said, the Spirit said, stop tiptoeing. He said to me, you a made man like it, like act like it. He said, your people will respect you and honor you. He said, you're not some pastor trying to prove yourself. Your members come to Bible study or log on to Wednesday night in the Word because they believe what you say. You walk uprightly before them. He said, teach like a made man. He said, stay humble, stay low. When I tell you to say something, don't worry about their faces. Don't worry about the likes and the hearts online. Don't worry about haters. He said, preach what I tell you. Teach what I tell you. He said, you didn't teach that bold enough. So I'm going to go crazy because God said, you're trying to teach this too politically correct. He said, you're talking about adultery. And, and and somebody in in there is creeping and what that's watching you is creeping and cheating and, and you're trying not to offend nobody that you're not hitting this like I told you to hit it. He said, get wrong with it, Cobra. Make it so that the most ghetto person that's watching online or pull you up on YouTube can say, you know what? I better stay home tonight. Mm -hmm. He said, teach it right. He said, you're so afraid of somebody seeing you the wrong way. And you always try to identify with broken people because you want them to know that you identify with their struggle. He said, but sometimes you got to say what I told you to say. He said, you're so busy trying not to offend other people uh, or old people that you're not helping the young people. And he said, any old people that doesn't receive it, forget it. What does what do you mean, Pastor? Because I was thinking about these good choices. And he said, Don't kind of say this, say it. <laughs> he told me to tell, he said, he told me to tell you that I know more about myself than anybody. <laughs> I've made as many mistakes than anybody, but I'ma tell you what has happened in my life. Because I only love this woman in my life, and that's Lady Cobra. Because I try to do right by my money. Because I try to treat people decent. Pieces on my life. And I'm not apologizing to nobody that's watching me. I'm not perfect. But peace is on my life. Ain't nobody calling my house. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody calling saying, are oh, you coming over tonight? Is your wife sleep? <laughs> I, I don't have to deal with all that mess. Because when you walk up right, I don't care what you say. You can lay down on your pillow. And peace will meet you. Mm, can I prophesy to somebody that made some mistakes in your life tonight? That the blood of Jesus has covered you. And you can throw your hands up and say, sleep, be sweet. Ooh, will you do that? Just type in the comment and say, sleep, be sweet. I want to tell every young person that is watching me, fall in love with one person. Stay out of mess. No matter how tempted you are, keep your money straight. Work hard. Read more than you watch TV. Pay your tithes. No matter who tells you you're stupid, give God 10% of your money. Uh, start right now. Honor one person. Single. Stay holy as you can. And what will be the result of that? Sweet sleep. <laughs> Sweet sleep. That person that's getting more sex than you, but they can't sleep. Yeah, they, they don't know if they got AIDS. They don't know if they got herpes. They don't know if they're pregnant. They don't know if they are in love or if it's lust. Yeah, yeah, she got a man, but she's not sleeping. Ooh, you ought to type in the comments and tell them I'm about to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> tell them I'm about to go to sleep. Come on, will you do me a favor? Will you just type in the comments and say, neighbor, I'm going to sleep. You can have all these men. I'm going to sleep. You can do all this crazy stuff out here. I'm going to sleep. Everybody ought to tell this to your child and say, listen to what pastor said. Come on, can I tell you the good thing about his grace? If you have done everything wrong in your life, he'll give you your peace back. My God, church folks don't know when to shout. You did everything wrong, but you're still sleeping right now because God put that grace on you and the blood of Jesus hit you. And when you found out how to do better, you start doing better. And even with all the mistakes in your life, God gave you another chance. God said, in spite of your situation, I'm going to bring peace to your house. Living right doesn't mean God fixes everything around you. Come on. But tell them, just type in the comments and just tell your neighbor, but he will fix you. Ooh, I'm going to say that again. Living right may not fix everything around you, but he'll fix you. God will fix you. I want to talk to somebody tonight. Somebody here that's watching me have a child. 
They are nowhere near where you want them to be, but you're sleeping at night. You know what? They out there doing all kinds of things, but you're sleeping at night. You decide, you know what? I can't change that. I can't change that boy. I can't change that girl. He got to make his own choices. All I'm going to do is say his name to Jesus, and I'm going to go to sleep. Somebody out there that's watching me, y'all don't believe me, but I'm praying for the healing of bodies in this ministry, in this church. I don't care what they diagnose you with. They are healed. You are healed. I speak it in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything with a name has to bow to the name of Jesus. If, if it has a name, it has to bow. And I say, come to church anyway and have peace. Log on online anyway and have peace. Why? Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. Everyone with sickness ought to say, devil, what you going to do? Because if I live, it's cool. If I die, it's still cool. I'm saved, bought with a price. How you going to scare me? I got peace. <laughs> Somebody ought to just give me some hearts. Come on. Somebody ought to just give God some praise. Come on. Give God 30 seconds of praise right there. Mm. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You ought to type in the comments and say, he gave me my peace back. He gave me my peace back. Come on. Tell him the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on. Come on. Tell somebody in his presence is fullness of joy. Come on. Tell somebody I can't lose with the stuff I use. Come on. Somebody preach to somebody. Preach to somebody in your house and say, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. Holy Ghost feel bought with the price. If anybody asks you who I am, tell them I've been redeemed. Come on. You ought to praise him for 30 seconds. Come on. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I think these horses is about to get they shout on y'all y'all ain't saying nothing i don't care what you don't have praise for what you do have come on you ought to tell your neighbor i may not be rich yet do you hear me? I may not be rich yet, but I got peace. Come on, tell them I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to log off this Bible study online, and I'm going to go get some sleep. Come on, tell somebody. I don't care what's going on. Tell them there ain't nobody looking for me. The police ain't looking for me. No man is going to shoot me because I'm with his wife. No brother is in my bed because I got peace. Will you do me a favor? Will you just type in the comments and say, neighbor, let that marinate a little bit. Go ahead. <laughs> let that marinate a little bit say just just come on just stand up come on just give god some glory and just start to think about all the stuff that used to keep you up all night used to keep you up all night all week scared to take a shower because you might miss a phone call uh, i ain't waiting on nobody to call me no more i got the peace of god in my life when you lay down your sleep will be sweet i'm finished i'm finished if I can get you to do anything tonight, is to walk in what I teach you so you can be successful. God, let everyone of them that's watching me tonight follow these principles. Let me teach so they can understand it and then let them walk in it. It's time for you to go get some money now. <laughs> I prophesy something is changing in your life. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm out of I'm out of time. I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. I think the horses done got happy. But uh listen, seriously, if you need prayer, call that number that's on uh the screen. Also, uh won't you consider being a blessing tonight? Thank you all for celebrating our pre-celebration service. Thank you for all of your giving. And uh we're not through celebrating, we're still celebrating because the official celebration will be March 21st, 10 a.m. I want you to join us. But uh, tonight, will you consider sowing a seed tonight to help us continue to uh, do the work of the Lord? I thank you. Oh, I love my church. I love GTV. They, they have not stopped being faithful in the pandemic. And I just thank you. And God knows uh, that I love you. And I pray for you daily. All right. Well, remember this. Why settle for good when great is available? Can't wait to see you next week. Be blessed.